Welcome back to another episode of the Scalability Podcast. And today I got my boy Stretch Coach Phil in the house. <laughs> Howdy. Welcome to the Scalability Podcast, your go-to resource for those who want to profitably grow their business and life beyond the limits of your personal time, energy, and skills. So he's just coming back from his new tour of his book that's a fucking sensation. <laughs> no, <I'm> just... <laughs> Stretch fits CA. Stretch fits CA. Check it out at stretchfitca.com. Dude, I'm I'm I'm, sp- I'm speaking it into right? into existence, yeah, no, bro. I'm that, speaking it. I like it. It's it needs that's how we work, right? It's you speak it those affirmations. Yeah. It's uh I even experienced that today or this week it's uh by kind of doing stepping into this figuring out this small business entrepreneurial type role of of my next steps Mm -hmm. and building a like the importance being an athlete i've known the quality and the importance of team Mm -hmm. you have to have a team behind you and working with you and finding those right individuals which led me to hvn and and understanding and not, I think uh, you just mentioned, he was like, what can entrepreneurs have is like letting go of your ego mm-hmm. and being okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Like know your strengths, know your weaknesses and your weaknesses are gonna what help hold you back or your blind spots, yeah. right? And kind of go from there. But let's talk about that, right? Because I think like uh, when you're dealing with entrepreneurs, there's a lot of ego. Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to your weaknesses. Yeah. Now over time, I've I have become okay with not just knowing exactly what my weaknesses are, but voicing them and being okay with yeah. you know with having those weaknesses. Um, for you, like, what was what did that discovery phase look like to find your weaknesses and overcome them? Well, the first thing is knowing what you're good at. Yeah. And then understanding that's what you're that's what you're good at, right? Mm-hmm. And being okay. Uh, I went to this other networking event where this individual was, again was talking about growth and scalability, and his biggest feedback was be okay to let go of certain things when you're failing, right? And understanding to circle back to the question of of what are my like i'm good at at making people being the guiding light to show them their path out of their pain and into health right it's not my goal i'm not the healer i'm not going to get you out of pain but i'm going to be your shepherd Mm -hmm. to show you the whys you're in pain right why are where can we improve to be healthy yeah. or can we gain energy right i'm gonna show you the past and be like yep that path no that path's a bunch of snake oil and bullshit, right yeah. Yeah. so don't go there so i'm more of just the shepherd that guides individuals right and that's what i'm good at yeah marketing crap financials taxes crap yeah. right yeah, me too. <laughs> but, <laughs> right yeah. it's uh keeping quality books crap right it's like understanding and saying okay i'm terrible at these things Mm -hmm. that's when you can have room for for growth and and that's where scalability has yeah yeah. because i can i've maxed out my capacity of managing my own schedule Mm -hmm and trying to do it and for those of you guys who don't know phil he um you know when it comes to like his practice he's pretty much like fully booked right um which okay what what is it exactly that you do um i essentially the best way to describe it so people can grasp it is 
uh, many words, physiotherapy, kinesiology, physical therapy, um, but essentially it's, I do stretch therapy, so it's, I will take you through a discovery session where I stretch and put you through movements, and from there I can see where you, your, what are called asymmetries, recruitment patterns, weaknesses, where you're good with flexibility, so I can see, and because my time spent in the physical therapy assistant world and as an athlete, I can direct you as like, okay, we need, you need more strength. We need to focus on creation range of motion here, or we just need to, you need to go see a chiropractor or whatever, because our, this yeah. is out of my realm. Yeah. Right. So essentially it's just learning. It's teaching one how to manage their physical health. Yeah, see, and, and there's a lot of people that I know that are really, really good at what it is that they do, but they still can't get fully booked. They, yeah. st they still can't get to the point where, like, you know, when I met you, you're like, dude, I got no time to breathe. Yeah. Right? Like, which, <laughs> which, by the way, like, if he's ever going to go on a tour, um, it's, it's, it's either going to be because he wrote a kick-ass book on his discoveries uh, from his career, or second, he figured out a way to scale what he's doing, and then he's going to teach other people how to do that. <laughs> yeah, like, and that's, that's yeah. the next step goal is step into a teaching guiding role because I have, and then this goes back to understanding your blind spots, understanding my limitations. Yeah. Like I only have so many hours in the day to actually physically work with people. Yes. So that if the goal is to expand and take care of the world, I don't have enough time in the world. So what's the next step and what does that mm -hmm. look like? Which by the way, from what I understand, uh, I, I had introduced you to a friend and she like, uh, she told me that you guys are probably working together. Yeah. Mercedes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. And that's, that's it. It's again, going back to establishing a team. Yeah. Right. Getting people, meeting people like yourself, uh, Lolo, the HVN guys, the marketing people. So they take, it's using leverage. Mm -hmm. Mercedes is good at marketing, branding, creating that, those foundations. Yeah. I sat down and talked to her, was like, well, wait, first, before we even get to advertise, we gotta make sure your foundations yep. and are laid. So when the scalability comes, you're not overwhelmed. Yeah. And that's what I'm experiencing now, mm -hmm. sense of overwhelmment, because I've maxed out my schedule. Mm -hmm. And because I love to give and love to help, that I'm going to say yes to, to helping an individual instead of working on my business. Is it, is it going to be wild one day where uh, one day you're going to be basically doing that same passion but on stage and there's 500 people who bought a ticket to come out? And <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's, yeah. and that's the plan. It's, it's, it's Paul Check is one of my mentors and he speaks with, it's like I, we all, right? We, gotta, we have to, you have to, understand and take care of your I self first. So this is all aspects of business, right? Even personal, it's like, I have to take care of me first. I can't, the old saying of like, I can't fill somebody's cup uh, if mine's half empty, right? I'm probably saying that terribly wrong, but take care of self first. Once, I, once we take care of the minor things, yeah. health, your systems, then we can go to your small community, mm -hmm. right? So that's the we, we yeah. like loved ones, family, the separations of one and two, right? Um, degrees of separation of one and two, and then the next scale is all, yeah. right? Worldwide, bigger community, state, whatever you want to look at it. I like that. I, we, all. Oh, yeah. Huh. So which is kind of being intimidating. So every level you have to have those systems in place yeah. for it to, uh, for you to not collapse under. Yeah, dude, I, I feel like uh, I, we all, um, this is what I spent, you know, this podcast, I spent a lot of time building this podcast. Yeah. Um, it's finally like getting traction. Um, you know, one of my clients the other day who was on a podcast with me, he messages me. He's like, dude, I just got, uh, someone just did business with me because they saw me on your podcast. And he owns a moving yeah. company. Um, and there's there's been a lot more effects like that happening mm -hmm. with the podcast as well. Um, and you know not just a podcast but like when it comes to like my business like 
I took care of myself first. I built this business that gives me monthly recurring income. Yep. And um, <clears throat> you know, now it's like the we is helping out my fellow you know, community uh, business owners as well who are looking to, uh, you know, to escape the jail, right? Esca yep. Escape the prison that they built for themselves. Because, yep. dude, like when you're working those, those long ass days and you're fully booked, like at first it's cool, but eventually like, you know, you're doing what you love, but eventually there comes a time where you're like, fuck. Yeah, you, uh, exactly. It's, and that's where I think one of the blind spots are for a lot of people in the beginning is you, you come into, to take a next step, it's usually a big step. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a fearful step because all you can see is the ledge. You don't know what's on the other side of the ledge, right? And it's a big jump to get there. So it's mm -hmm. either you jump and go for it and you may fall if you don't reach it, but yeah. which will create a crash. But it, that's what the next step is, 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 is that leap of faith, right? And if you take that leap of faith, for me, it's a dragging of a feet out of fear of that leap. Mm -hmm. But soon as you do it, um, that's when things start to come into fruition of like, okay, do I have enough, do I have enough money to reach out for somebody to help with marketing mm -hmm. for a virtual assistant mm -hmm. or assistance, right? Uh, do I have the time to bring on somebody else to teach them the way? Mm -hmm. Do I have even time enough to continue my own studies, continuing education? Do I have time, which right now I'm sacrificing, which is terrible, is my own health and fitness. It's like I'm this fitness professional, yet <laughs> I am not doing my fitness professional things, even though technically that is my job. I should be valuing it because I'm sacrificing my bigger goal. Of, my goal is helping other, in, other individuals, so I'm always gonna say yes. Dude, it's a, that's a, the, the mechanic that has a broken down car, the doctor with bad health, the, yeah. you know, like this, this has been something that we've known for years. How, the, the maid with the dirty house. The, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, it just, it's, it's very common. Um, so it's, I don't think it's anything to worry about because like, um, you know, you're, you're doing two things. You're, you're doing your practice, but you're also an entrepreneur. Yeah. And you know, the two are full-time jobs on their own. Right. Yeah. The two both require 150%. And kind of, uh, and what you were saying earlier, so uh, a strategy that worked out for me really well when I was scaling Outsource Plug was, um, you know, my, my risk tolerance is very high compared to most people's. So whenever I would have any extra money, I hired people. Yeah. So whenever I would close a deal, two deals, I would literally reinvest the profit, hire somebody. Um, and w for whatever department that would be, whether it was sales, whether it was recruiting, whether it was HR, it didn't matter. Um, I ran outsource plug always like with nothing in the bank, yeah. right? And that's the reason why we, you know, grew so quick, right? Yeah. If, if you look at like our charts, it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it goes up pretty fast. And uh, right now <clears throat> with last year, we did a plateau, but coming back though, that's like, uh, that's something that, um, not, not everybody has that gut, you know no. what I mean? <laughs> a lot of people yeah. need like a, a big savings. <laughs> and you know, sometimes I'll ask my friends like, you know, like how much you got in savings? Oh, like I got like 40, 50 grand. I'm like, bro, blow it. Yeah. Just go, you, you, you come up with your best ideas when you're like, when you're fucking stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. That's when your most innovative thinking yep. happens when you're stuck and you have like no choice but to be innovative. Yep. Exactly. And also too, to hate your situation. Like if you, if you don't, if you are not in a place, if you're not putting yourself in a place constantly where you're going to hate your situation, um, like, okay, like I'll give you an example. Um, okay. Let's say like, let's say like you right now, right? Like how many years have you been like booked as, as long as you've been booked? Um, when I'm fully, it's, it will literally, I've, gone back and forth i've left it and i've come back a bunch of times but within three months i'm mm -hmm. always fully booked yeah see, and, and it gets to, it, it gets to a point where it's like fuck how the fuck do i make the same money but working like 20 percent of the time yeah like how you know yeah. like you're, you're, and usually your brain doesn't your brain doesn't like start to like work that way until you're you know, damn near broke. Yeah. Until you're like, damn, how am I going to pay my rent? Yeah. Until you're like, damn, I need to like, you know, 
duck and dodge and bob and weave to to live. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um, but yeah. Anyway, sorry. But no, I get what you're saying, and that's because it's a that's a natural instinct you're talking about, right? People say, oh, you have ADD and all this other stuff and blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, those are natural mechanisms to make you get off your ass and go hunt for food so the fucking tribe will survive. Yes. Right? That is a natural thing for us humans. And we've just lived in this society of comfort that we forgot about that. Yeah. So to be honest, we all have this entrepreneurial spirit inside us mm -hmm. because if we didn't we're all from the human race and that was what we had to do on a daily basis to survive dude i didn't think of it that way right so back you just 500 600 years ago whatever yeah, yeah. not even that 100 years ago 18, yeah. late 1800s early 1900s those who had their own farms like the statistic and probably getting this wrong 1930 45% of the Americans grew their own food and cooked their own food. If you grew your own food, that meant you had to be up every morning, planted the seeds, taking care of the cows or whatever. If you don't do those things, the crop fails. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you had to get up and go. Yeah. Right? If you go a little bit further to our pre-tribal primitive sentence, like, yeah, you have to get up every single day or camp out in the woods and go track and hunt. Yeah. Right? It's a natural mechanism. The women, they would go usually get the survival foods of nuts and berries, but shit had to be taken care of and had to be done. Yeah, the men, and it's, the it's men like, were killing the saber tooth tigers. <laughs> but, but that's just the way. That's where this ADD mechanism comes into play. It's like, no, you don't have ADD. It's just something, my belief, something ancestral deep inside of you saying, I'm bored. There's more to it. You have more capability. You are superhuman. You are your own superhero. You just haven't tapped into it. Yeah. Right. So, you know, when it comes to uh, so when it comes to ADD, I talk about this a lot or ADHD, right? Um, and I feel like most most of the most of the people that I've had on this podcast, um, they have some sort of like you know attention fucking disorder right? yeah yeah um so you're you're saying that we don't have add we have a lack of i, I get it what stressful positions or what just to me it's we live like i said we live in an age of comfort yeah right uh and where everything is 68 degrees right we're not stressed we don't have to get like we don't have to go through winters. <laughs> we don't have to go really go through a heavy summer. Yeah. Right. Uh, when we're little kids, you're plopped in a desk for eight hours, mm -hmm. told to be quiet, shut up, listen. Yeah. Right. It's deconditioned out of you. But the ones that rebel, that are like all over the place, that have high levels of it. Mm -hmm. Right. What happens to those, usually the story you hear with those individuals that are very disruptive, mm -hmm. who do they end up being? Yeah, the, the big dogs, the, they, they make the biggest uh, companies, the craziest inventions, they, do, uh, the, they become the best athletes, yeah. they, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's always, you always hear that story, yeah. right, of like the guy who couldn't sit still, who was a rebellious one, but then at the end of the day he ends up being the most successful one right correct right yeah. and that's where it's just this natural of go yeah you're supposed to constantly go we're supposed to move that's where the hunger that hunger we we get hungry you're going to be okay mm -hmm. you can yeah. you can literally go months without food mm -hmm. that's our mechanisms but that hunger it's like that's that little reminder get out get off your ass and go hunt yeah go find some some nuts and berries and worms and stuff, right? So I want to I, I want to like uh, turn the turn directions real yeah. quick because I'm, I'm curious on your perspective, right? So um, okay, uh, the entrepreneur, right? So you you have entrepreneurs that come from all different types of businesses. Okay? Yes. So you know, every entrepreneur at some point becomes, you know, uh, becomes um, 
they, they don't move. What's the word for not moving? Uh, like, you know, they're stuck in an office. Stuck in stagnant. Stagnant? Yeah. Okay, cool. So every entrepreneur at one point becomes stagnant. Even people in the fitness industry, eventually you grow your business big enough, you're in the office. Yeah. You, 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 you own a landscaping company, you used to be the person mowing the grass, doing all that stuff, now you're in an office. Right? Yeah. When you get to a certain point. So now when we look at entre- the state of entrepreneurs today, right, um, you know, entrepreneurs are dealing with very high levels of stress. We yep. have a lot of cortisol and shit that's running through. Yep. Uh, I don't know if it's our brains or body or whatever. I yeah. don't know. But um, and and it, and again, it's it's not it's not just like oh, only people who work in in office type companies. Like literally, every entrepreneur, every type across the board, you know, falls into this. Uh, at a certain level, they they fall into a level of stagnation. Yeah. What you know? What can entrepreneurs do to make sure that um, you know they're they're staying, I guess, effective still? Because uh, movement has a lot to do with how we function, yeah, you know, yeah. mentally, right? Yeah. Like, what what's your view on this whole fucking topic? Of like, of yeah, it's. I think it comes down to the question of it's like figure out what's your dream. Right. What's AKA your what we call it motivation. Mm-hmm. The goal is what's your dream. What does your dream life look like? What does if you were to look at a crystal ball and ask, okay, if I stay in this place, what does it look like six months from now? What does it look like a year from now, three, five years? And is it in alignment of that goal? Right. What is your goal? I want to create a system that is is repeatable and has low entry points so people can understand that health and fitness is not this daunting regiment task Mm -hmm. that it's actually very easy so let's get more tactical then yeah so we got the idea now what's your motivation what do you want cool nobody wants to be fat out of shape and fucking yeah yeah yeah. you know everybody wants to make money look good feel good everybody yeah but you know most people are just going to make money most people won't but for those, a lot of those are going to start making money and then they're going to, you know, they're going to look like shit, feel like shit. Like I do like yeah. guys, I'm, I'm, you guys are going to fast forward to this podcast in six months and I'm going to be changed because I, I had a fucking scare, bro. Yeah. I had a scare. My, my ankle, my, my right ankle, like every, like, uh, every week or so yeah. for a few days, it would start to like, kind of like curve. Yeah. And then I, I, I would have like a lot of pain. Yeah. And I, there was times I couldn't walk. Like and a I would, cramp, like you would cramp. No, it's not even a cramp. It's yeah. just like a, I don't know. It's just like a very sharp fucking pain in yeah. it. Dude, it, it got to the point where like I was telling my girl, I was like, this is like very scary. Yeah. To think, and like I would walk and like, it's like I, was, I would try to walk normal. Yep. But my foot would not let me. Yep. And it, was, it felt stuck. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. Like what, <laughs> what happens if this continue? You know, cause yeah. I, I, all right. How exactly. Chris Ball, what happens if this continues? What happens so, if that continues? All right, so tactical, tactics. Yeah, right. And it's, again, it goes, relate that. Okay, if this is your, your awakening, yes. quote unquote awakening, yeah. what, what are we, now it turns into not so much a, a dream, but what's your fear? Yeah, not, not being able to walk is my fear. Yeah, and then which, if we're not able to walk, that means health deteriorates. Then what happens after that? Oh, dude, then I become even fatter. And, okay, and, and then what I'll, happens if I'm, now I'm even fatter, then what happens after that? Then I'll be even more depressed, like, because okay. I, can't, I can't move at all. And then what happens, then it goes into how does that reflect your relationships? Like, family, friends? Yeah. Oh, dude, I would probably start losing relationships. Like, I probably wouldn't be able to get out and go have friends. Uh, you know, my aunt, like, I, I go visit my entrepreneur yeah. friends. Nobody's gonna come and fucking visit me when yeah. I'm depressed and down. I probably wouldn't even want to see people. Yeah. Right? So yeah, then uh, you know my son, like you know, fuck, like he's he, you know he's a, he want, he's an athlete and yeah. his dad's like this like you know chunky dude, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's not good. But and even then, then, it's like the question one could ask would: Do you want to be there for your son's wedding? Yeah, and I have another one on the way. Do you so, want to be there for that? And that's where how big is the dream or how big is the fear is what motivates and what should hopefully not keep one stagnant, right? And finding a mentor or other coaches to 
walk you down those paths as an entrepreneur, I think is very important. So, so are you saying that like there's no difference between working with entrepreneurs and working with everyone else? Um, yes and no. Uh, no, because quality friendships will hold you accountable, right? Mm -hmm. Quality family members will hold you accountable. You may not want to hear it from your family me members and get pissed off when they actually do call you out on your shit. Mm -hmm. But as you're thinking, it's like, okay, yeah, I am, I am unhealthy. This is scary, yeah. right? So on, do we always need entrepreneurs or coaches or mentors? No, we just probably need quality friendships mm -hmm. that hold you accountable, right? It's like I, some of my best friends, same thing. They'll practice what they're... Would they be a, an individual that I would want my kid to look up to? Mm. Right? That's kind of my thought process. When you're, when you're looking at your friends. Yeah. It's like, okay, okay so. are these people driven? Are they motivated? Do they always have to be the, the definition of health? He's like, no, because that is just a small aspect of, of life. Uh, but having somebody with quality morals and ethics and can teach and guide and be a, what should be a, a mentor and somebody to look up to instead of these people that have no idea who you are, mm -hmm. AKA are entertainment individuals. Mm -hmm. Like that's who I want as my friends. And that's who can, you don't always need to be an entrepreneur. You could just be a common nine to fiver who's okay in being at that position, but lives in a quality way. So let me, all right, let me, let me, let me rephrase it a little okay. bit because I, right, there's multiple, there's many, many different ways of training. Yeah. Right. Yes. Now is, all right. Would, would you agree that when you're doing martial arts, like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, or even like boxing or like all these, even CrossFit. Yeah. Do you, do you. Do you think that there's a lot of deterioration that happens to your body when you're doing those oh. types of sports? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now when you're doing those types of sports, and, and this is this is where like, this is why I'm curious about like, uh, you know, like what, what you would recommend as well, because, um, you know, like for an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. A lot of times entrepreneurs are like, yeah, I want to go into like these fighting sports. Yeah, yeah. But it's like at the same time, it's like sometimes I think about it, I'm like, well, I'm an entrepreneur. Am I, am I, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to spend time, you know, doing a workout, like I want to spend time doing something that is going to help me with my event. Yep. Like what is my event? My event is a 24 seven fucking game that never stops yep. where my phone goes off at any time. Yep. Anything could happen. Right. Yeah. And I need to be doing something that helps me with that. Yep getting fucking punched in the face or choked out <laughs> that's only gonna add to it right well yeah uh, you know it's it's not it's it's like okay what the fuck do i look like you know going and doing brazilian jiu-jitsu getting my fucking arm snapped back yep. you know like yep. going, going to the office like hey what's up guys yeah <laughs> you know yeah. like no it's i think and this is what i feel separates me from most is my honest opinion during my assessment and of like, hey, look, you're going 24 seven. Your cortisol levels and stress levels are through the work roof. Right now, you don't need another, what is called yang, like a yin and yang. We all know that symbol yang is means like masculine, go hard, right? And then yin is more self care, relaxing, massaging, right? Hence yin yoga, restorative yoga. Mm. So, in this environment we live in, especially as Americans, if you're not first, you're last, we have mm -hmm. a lot of masculine yang energy, yeah. right? And that's where you're seeing it show up with high stress, premature gay, uh, not gay, premature grayine, right? Um, testosterone levels are plummeting through the roof, right? We're gonna need in vitro for women to get pe pregnant, all these hormonal imbalances because we're so in the yang and stress that you come to me and I'm gonna be like, look, 
we're going to have to not work out for a bit and we're going to have to do what's called instead of working out we're going to work in hmm. right so hmm. i'm going to want you to go to find a, a yin yoga restorative class we're going to work on your breath work your nasal br breathing and diaphragmic breathing i'm going to probably stretch you especially if you're really tight we're going to move the body in a more relaxing way first until we can get those stress levels to come down where it's not you're not aggro all the time when people go type a's entrepreneurs who are chasing they're doing the jujitsu and the classes that are high intensity interval training they're just training a cortisol adrenaline spike release that they think oh i feel relaxed it's like no you just got another hit of it mm. right and that's just you got just another hit of cortisol spike they're they're, uh, they're letting it all gang yeah. out yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> right it's just literally like a drug and then we have try to see then the sugar cravings show up late at night right mm. and then that's where it's like this perpetual motion that we don't think we don't put these connections together mm -hmm. but it's like no we have to you have to slow down yeah slow down in a way of like not so much no i want you to fucking and keep going and keep driving yeah. and keep pushing but we have to we have to balance you out first that's interesting okay so now let's say like which by the way i, I really agree with this this mindset right because yeah. i think like um you know so you got you got like uh, Andrew Tate out here, right? Yeah. Who's, who's pushing like you know, be a man, train, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like all right. Well, dude, I haven't been in a fight for fucking over a decade, mm -hmm. right? I don't plan on getting into any fucking fights. Yeah. Um, so you know, for me, it's like it, it comes back to again, like I'm I, if I'm going to do something, um, like I, you know, boxing and stuff, it's it's it's, in, it's intriguing to me. Yeah. Um, but. You know, if I have to, if I have to make a choice on how I'm going to spend my money and how I'm going to spend my time, um, I need it to make sense for like what I want. Because yeah. as an entrepreneur, I'm probably 10% of the way where I actually want to be financially. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I still have like my current goal. Like obviously, goals always change. But right now, realistically, like I'm trying to get to a point where I have more money than I could ever spend. Yeah. Right. Or like to a point where I just don't need money anymore. Yeah. Right. Where it's just, it's just, it's just a tool. And I'm not stressed out about it, and there's enough to go around, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't think that boxing or Brazilian jiu-jitsu or any of these things are going to get me there. Yeah. I think that you know when I'm looking for like what what my next move is is like this is where I'm, you know, where I'm considering, right? Yeah. So, okay. What? Uh, so now let's say like for example, all right. We did the yin yoga, which, by the way, guys, I, this is how I, met, <laughs> how I met my girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> she uh, she was teaching hatha yoga, which is like uh, probably like maybe a notch or two above yin, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because you, <laughs> you know, I, I look at yoga like you have like your really easy stuff, you have yeah. like your yeah. restorative, uh, and then you know hatha is like kind of in the middle of like restorative, and then you got your like fucking you know hot hot yoga uh vinyasa classes or whatever but yeah for for men who have like yet to try it highly recommend it um dude i remember for the first time i like touched my toes i was like holy shit yeah <laughs> this, is, this is crazy um but all right now cool we we hop so let's just say we hop on this regiment we're doing the yoga we're do, we got the breath work down doing the stretching probably like doing some walking and hiking yep okay yeah we do that for like three months yeah now what we reassess and we look. You can do a deep dive of legitimately getting your blood work done, especially mm -hmm. your hormones. And it'll, there are markers that will tell you whether or not you're stressed. Mm -hmm. right? That's the biggest advantage of the world we live in today is we have the technology and the feedback to show oh, what you're actually doing is working. How do you get those hormone tests done? Like, what do they cost? Um, let's see, a Dutch test, which is probably, the Dutch test is the most intense because with the Dutch test, you're pissing on a strip, um, I think six times throughout the day. Oh. Right? Because now you're getting snapshots the throughout day. the day oh. instead of just one time. So it's more accurate, right? And with that, I think... It's somewhere between the 250 to 500 dollar range. Yeah. Right. But that information is 
it's invaluable, yeah. right? Because now it's like, okay, now we have a snapshot of where you're at today, mm -hmm. right? And then we do that three, four, six months of that inner work. One, you're gonna know, you're gonna know, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna not wake up as groggy as much. And if we do exactly what I tell you to do, or let's say 80%, like we'll lose weight. What are the markers? We'll lose weight. Our energy levels will be higher, right? Uh, eyes will become clearer. Skin will become clearer. We're not breaking out anymore. We may grow, like for men who are losing hair or, or thinning hair, it will grow back, right? There's all these physical markers that will naturally happen. But then it's like just to reaffirm it, we can always test. Hmm. Just like any type of other science, you, you test assess and then retest how much does your practice have to do with testosterone like um right now currently in this phase none in the future years like three years down the road we will i will be implementing testing to it just so we could have that data mm -hmm. right as an individual myself i get my blood work extensive blood work mm -hmm. right i'm spending probably a minimum of three grand a year on my blood work, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't want to wait until I get a scare, right? Until I start, because I'd rather have a baseline of what I'm healthy. So what does my health look like internally on paper mm -hmm. instead of waiting down the road? So if I'm keeping track, right? Just like we keep track of data n number analytics. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, we want analytics. I'm looking at my Instagram post, what's going viral, what's not going wrong. Do that for your fucking self, right? That's the I. We take care of I first, and then you'll see what happens later, because that's energy. Yeah. If you want to go 24 seven for the rest of your life or until your kids are out the door, you're, this is the long haul, right? So, okay, here's my question now. Uh, first, Lola, can, can I get a water, please? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, y'all don't look at my girl's butt on the phone. Yeah, uh, but my, uh, my question is uh, in diet, like when it comes to diet, yeah. right? Is, is your, when you're, well, first off, do you, do you give diet plans to your, uh, to your clients? Yes. The okay. ones that request it. Perfect. Right. Now, when it comes to the diet plan, is it one size fits all or? No. Okay. Because you are, your diet, your digestive system, your, as just as unique as your, as your fingerprint. Mm. Right. Uh, my general advice for when people ask is understand, again, this comes down to testing, right? Understanding your genetics. It's my belief like genetic testing and understanding where your bloodlines come from is where your body will most likely Wait, thrive. Wait, what, what, what ethnicity are you, dude? I don't think I have. <laughs> I like, I lucked out. I'm like a mixed bag. <laughs> so I have like Spanish, indigenous, Americano uh -huh. is one half. So Latin. Americano is a thing? Like, well, according to uh, flow, it's like, yeah, I have my bloodlines are from California, Mexico. Oh, so you're right where you're fucking supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay. <laughs> and then my, my mom's side is, is European, essentially the uh -huh. UK, Scottish. Okay. Right. So I'm a, considered a mutt, which for me is a good thing. Now I have access to more foods. Mm. Oh. Does that make sense? Huh. Okay. Whereas like if... Your one of my friends who she's a chiropractor, it was funny, she sent me her DNA results and she was like, well, that was a waste of money. She's a pure blood Korean, <laughs> yeah. right? Like pure bloods are rare, yeah. right? But they do exist. Okay, so what food should she eat? Only from that region? Yeah, where, <laughs> like one, you wanna really dial it in, what are foods of Korea, huh. right? What do they thrive on? And then on top of that, you're gonna add like, okay, then it's gonna be quality sourcing, right? Where the food comes from is what matters. Like, it's my intention to only buy foods that are grown and raised in California, mm. right? That will be, if I'm on top of my game, that's, I'm one, there's many aspects energetically, because one people I think overlook is the energy for food 
going back to tribes, you go for a hunt, you get a kill, which was very rare. That's a celebration. Yeah. What did you have? You had a, it was everyone dressed up. There was a big fire. There was a big party. We yeah. celebrated, right? And that's energy everyone cooked because now we're nourishing, right? Same thing with like Italians, Mexicans, mamas cooking dinner, right? Went to your birthday, walk in, there's that big pot of food. <laughs> that food is made with love yeah, yeah. that's gonna be he was at my birthday yeah. party, that's how he knows <laughs> right? that's gonna be a food of love yeah so it's more than just like i'm getting calories and blah 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 mm. like i hate this macro blah blah crap is like no buy foods that are picked and made and grown with love and then on top of that cook cooked with love interesting so i i know for sure like I, i've never done a test but like my i'm like half mexican half nicaraguan yeah that i know right but like also half Me the nicaraguan side like my great great grandpa was like a fucking pirate that yeah. came from spain <laughs> yeah right so like i know that like my blood will go to the european side yeah. par partly but you know like let's say you you found someone who was also kind of like you or let's just say um you know straight Mexican descent, yeah. right? Like what are some of these foods that are going to, you know, em empower them to help them lose weight, keep energy? Like what, what would that diet look like? Um, again, there's a, a part of the assessments too. It's you have people who thrive more on, it's like you, you have either these hot, like Chinese medicine talks about hot energy and cold energies, right? <clears throat> Those individuals will thrive more off of a high protein diet, mm -hmm. or some people will thrive off more of a, a, a vegan uh, plant-based diet, yeah, yeah, right? Again, that comes down to testing and, and our tracking analytics, going back to being uh, connected and understanding it's like, okay, I had this raw kale salad Mm -hmm. And then a day or two later, like my energy levels like crash. Mm -hmm. People don't put that those two that those could be possibly uh, correlated. Yeah. Right. Because Dude. raw dino kale has high levels of oxalate and it's harder for the body to digest. So now I just spent all this energy digesting, fermentating. It drops it out. Right. Uh, yeah. So how does that like, okay, like, for example, like, I'm, 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 how does that work for biracial couples, right? Like, when both <laughs> want to be like, when they want to be healthy. I'm, I'm, no, seriously, like, I'm, I'm Mexican, Nicaraguan. Uh, you know, my girl, she's like half black, half, like, actually, she's not half anything. She's a mutt like you. Yeah. But like, you know, so there's all there's a lot of biracial couples everywhere who, you know, want to be healthy. Does that mean like, at dinner, like, we're serving two different things? Possibly. Wow. It depends on just like, like how dedicated you yeah, want to be. Yeah. Okay. Or? It's and this comes down to like I'm going to reference proper programming for weight training, oh. right? Let's say we're both wrestlers, right? Same weight class, same height, and whatnot. We shouldn't have the same workout. Mm. We have to look at it, like say you have more what are called type two A fibers, and I have way more type two B fibers. I'm going to have a, I should have a different workout because my body responds differently to it. Mm -hmm. Will there be a lot of similarities? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And the switch may be, uh, maybe like instead of you having, instead of you have beef and she has fish. Mm. Right. So because she's more of a mutt, she may have the same thing with me because I'm a mutt and I have a broader list because yeah. I'm more adaptable because mm -hmm. I have many things to pull from. Wow. You know, you just, you probably, there's probably going to be people listening to this like, wow, feels good to be a mutt for the first time in my right. life. <laughs> but that's what we're, that's part of evolution, right? It's, it's mixing to make us stronger. Mm. And same thing with entrepreneurs. It's you mix with other individuals and other entrepreneurs to see different aspects and to make you stronger as an entrepreneur yourself, mm -hmm. right? You're in the marketing business world. I'm not, we're still entrepreneurs. We yeah. can help each other become yeah. stronger and move forward together. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Is the way I kind of view it. Yeah. See, and this is, um, so, and this is where like, uh, to me, 
to me when I'm thinking about, um, oh God, when I'm thinking about people that I want to hire, people I want to help, right? I'm always thinking about like, okay, so for example, like stretch coaches, I know about four people who do do stretching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Insurance agents, I know about 50. Yeah. Real estate agents, I know about a thousand. Yeah. Right. But like for me, it's like when I'm doing business with people, it's like I'm always looking for that edge. Yeah. So it's like you are an insurance agent plus you help you actually referred me a lot of business. Yeah, I'm going to choose you. Yeah. You are a real estate agent, but you've been my friend. You've gone to all my birthday parties. You, you know, I've, I've been able to ask you favors. You send me referrals. Like when I'm ready to buy a house, yeah, I'm going to choose yep. you. Right. Um, and when it comes to like, you know, people in fitness, right. It's like, I was just talking about this with the, with the guy yesterday. Like it takes two days to get a fucking to get to get a, uh, a personal training yeah. uh you know certification right yeah. and two two days and he said like 395 or something like that yeah <laughs> right. right no it's so, literally legitimately it yeah so it's like so anybody can just uh enter this realm if they want so i'm always looking for like you know this person has the extra edge and why and like one guy i met maybe 10 years ago he was a very interesting guy because yep. he um, he wasn't. He, he didn't do stretching, but he was a he was a personal trainer. Uh, he was a personal trainer. I forget. There was. It was probably like kinesiology or something. But the third one was interesting. He was a historian. Mm-hmm. So he like he was very fascinated with the way that the body has worked and has evolved over time. O- over yeah. time, right? Yeah. And like not even just like you know like primal to now, um, but even. Uh, you know, like the difference between the human body, uh, you know, like well, what did the, what did the human body look like 200 years ago? Yep. Right? And like also, it was just very fascinating, uh, very fascinating. He's he's the, he's actually the person who who who, made, who pushed me to think that way. Like, what is your actual event? Yeah. Like you you want you're working out because a lot of people think like, you know, okay, I'm gonna go work out or I'm gonna go start exercising and yep. they're like I'm gonna go do boxing and he would say, well, why? Yeah. Why are you going to do boxing? Yeah, that's a great question. Why? Like, what? Yep. You know, well, what's 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 your what's the purpose behind yep. this? Because, uh, again, if that is not your event, yep. If that is like okay, if you're training to be a marathon runner, all right, it makes sense that you would go do marathon runner things. Yep. Um, but if that's not your event, why are you training? So, and, and don't get me wrong, there's probably you know there's. Uh, one of my best friends owns a boxing gym. It's a lot of fun to, yeah. you know, go in there and, and do boxing and whatnot. Um, but so for for someone like me, like I've I've been hesitant because, like, I know what it does to my body when I start doing it. Yep. You know, like if I if, if I go and uh, if I if Monday comes and my fucking arms are like getting on the fucking you know the desk. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not having it. Like I can't. Yeah. You know, it's not good for me. But um, but yeah, man. I don't know. Just any any any. We're we're about to start closing out here. Yeah. But any thoughts that you want? But to But no, to us? that he asked the right question, and it's why. And again, it goes back to the original. It's like, what's your goal? What's your purpose? Why do you want to do this? Yeah. Right. A lot of people. It's very, very basic. Of like, I want to look good. I want big pecs. I want a six pack. I want a big butt. Right. It's very low level. Right. The very basic childhood child, the child archetype. Um, Here's what I found. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank no, you. Now you want now you want to talk. <laughs> uh, right. Um, mentality. And as we age, I think the only thing with as we age, it's really understanding your purpose because in your 20s, when I was in my 20s, I could eat two extra large pizzas from Little Caesars, uh, a number, whatever, four from McDonald's and all this and still have an eight pack, right? It's once you get out of your 20s, everyone could look fly in their 20s and only work out like 30 minutes a day. Yeah. Once you age, right, those, your leeway bucket, your leeway becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. So with the trainer, he's like, okay, what's your goal, what's your purpose? And understanding the low entry, like where you're at is key. Okay, you wanna go boxing because it's interesting. As a, uh, as a, a man and the masculine energy of being able to protect you, you want to have that skill set of protection, not only just, oh, because I want to be a badass, but I do it because I want to protect the ones I love if need be, right? 
uh, it's like, okay, maybe we just do some privates one-on-one -on -one and we just learn the footwork and the technique. Yeah. So it's, we don't have to go zero to hero. Yeah. Uh, and that's where the problem lies is people don't know their goal and their real why, right? It's like, no, I want, for me at this point, because I don't have any kids nor married or anything, it's like, I want to be able to make love to my partner when I'm 105. I still want to wake up with that full, right, a camp tent erect when I'm 105 and no problem. That's like a great that, goal. That's right? a great and goal. Being able to get up and be vibrant. Like yeah. That's one of the best definitions of health is your libido. Yeah. Right? That is like probably the ultimate definite is your libido. Can we reproduce when you're in the reproduction yeah. stage of your life? Do you, how old are you? 41. 41. Man, you, you are. See, <laughs> this, this guy right here is, is prime male right here. So if there's any ladies that are watching this right now, you're looking for a high value man, this is it right here. Right. Oh, you're a good looking dude. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and he's up like a tent. You know <laughs> <laughs> right? But same thing with the woman, it's the reverse. It's we want not to be like brash, but we want to be able to get that natural wetness going yeah. right yeah, and that's absolutely. like a sign of health mm -hmm. luckily with women they have a monthly cycle mm -hmm. and a monthly gift that they get to check in and see how healthy they are yeah with guys we have to spend a little bit more or be a little bit more self as an attention to details like what's what does my hair skin and nails feel like Right? What do you, how do, are my bowel movements? How yeah. is my, does my urine smell? Yeah. Right? Do my bowels smell like crap? Am I super gassy all the time? Am I burping and farting? You're not supposed to be doing this all the time. Yeah. Right? Are my eyes clear? Dude, dude I fart right? a lot. <laughs> right? No, that means we're eating something that the body doesn't agree with. We're fermentating it. Yeah, let's, let's, right? like, okay, dude, if you guys, okay. uh, seriously, like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I feel like probably like, it's, it's, has this been through our whole relationship? Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm eating some. I'm I told, so again, I'll remind you that Automa, Auto, I don't even, Justin McGuire is his name. Uh, I'll reconnect you again, but I, that's where my limitations lie. I'm gonna refer you yeah. to somebody who can understand gut and nutrition. So you're but not Australia like- Australia or South Africa? South Africa, yeah, 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 right? Okay. He's yeah. gonna be able to Granted, again, we're investing in ourselves. Yeah. We're using those analytics. He does all that blood work and testing. Yeah. He's going to tell you straight up, this is what we need to focus on. This is what you need. This is where you're at. And we're going to yeah. dial it in. Like you dial in nutrition and sleep, first and foremost, sleep and nutrition, hydration. Everything else becomes easy. Sleep, nutrition, hydration. Yeah, and guys, I'm, uh, you know, I always put myself out there on this podcast because I see myself as like the martyr. Right? Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to hide. But that's that's really that's really fucking interesting. Um, and you know what? So, so I think uh, I think we're gonna have to do a part two, uh, okay. a, a more thoughtful, uh, a more thoughtful in depth part two. Yeah. Um, but for now, if someone wants to get a hold of you, how do they do so? Um, on Instagram, reverse out of pain coach. Uh, that's my IG handle. You can check me out on my website. It's uh, stretchfitca.com, all one word, obviously, together. Um, and then all my information is on my website, and you can slide into my DMs on my Instagram. <laughs> um, that's right. But yeah, that's those are the easiest way to get a hold of me. Yeah, that's so. maybe maybe what we could do is like I could probably like get like a fucking blood test yeah. and like we we might be able to just like go through it and, and like, re yeah exactly. talk about it because I, I don't dude let's put it out there because this is this is really fucking interesting to me. But guys, I I think um, so from a health perspective, entrepreneurial perspective, like whatever. I uh, Phil has actually referred me business. Um, I have referred him people like guys connect connect with Phil. He's yeah. uh, he's dope with it. And I think yeah, that's what it's about. It's 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 I think you talk about an extra thing that one may be like I'm a connector so one of my gifts is like I'm gonna remember your talents whom your talents if we haven't met may be and somebody's gonna say I need this and I'm gonna be like I know your guy I know your girl 
they're really good at it. They're going to yeah. take care of you because, again, you surround yourself by people who are passionate and who care and are genuine. That's who I strive to find, in, and I hope to be that for individuals like yourself and Lolo and stuff like that. And the viewers. And potentially <laughs> you someday. <laughs> right. So Thank you for hopping no on. No problem. Lolo. Appreciate yeah. you.